Now to the background image. And this is a complete different story, right? So first of all, let's have a look on our format. The background image has a certain format and we have to change our render format to fit this, to match this image. Um, to replace the until now visible HDRI by a background image, we first of all have to uncheck the visibility. Or in other words, as we have to do it here, we check invisible. Okay? So when I render again, we don't see this anymore, but something different. This is the default background environment. Of course, we don't want to keep this. So what do we do? We change the render settings, go to the V-Ray Bridge settings, environment. And here we choose a texture. And of course, we choose the Loris <laughs> Um, type of my backplate images. Okay, so when you do this, you will see this instead of the light blue color. Okay, don't believe me. No, actually, this is not uh, what I expected, but this is, uh, you know, this happens all the time. So, what do we do? First of all, we switch off the um, plane and the car and uh, to make this more easy, I just oops, I just put them into a null and switch this off. And then we go back to the render settings environment. And as you can see, the map tab is spherical. This is of course wrong. We have to use frontal. Okay. So frontal means we see the image just as it is and take a second try. And this is our image. So it's rather disappointing. It doesn't just look like it used to in the first place in my file browser. So what can we do? First of all, we change the render output size because this image is mapped completely onto the output frame. And this means in this uh, case, it's distorted. So I just take the correct ratio of my image. The image itself has got much more pixels than I'm using now, but uh, I take a tenth of the size of the picture. So this is what I'm doing. And then I go back to my environment and replace the image by a filter again. This is always a good idea. And just have a look on my filter settings. As I tried out, there were some things I could change in the hue settings, I just gave a little bit more red, as you can see, a little bit more saturation, and some more gamma, so some less gamma, actually. Okay, so this is, of course, a result of trial and error. So you will do this, you will have to do this every time you doing do something like this. Okay, so that looks different. A little bit too dark, actually. Um, but you can see the difference. This is more yellowish, this is more reddish. And then we can also um, use the multiplier. Let's use, for example, a multiplier of three, have it rendered again, and look if this is now what we want. OK, this looks rather nice, I think. So these are the parameters you can choose in the environment settings, OK? So this is the environment, uh, the background, nothing more, nearly nothing more, because there is something left. And I will show you what is left. Um, let's take a cube into the scene. And this cube is somewhere there. Um, and we give this cube the same color as the car. OK, now when I hit render, As you can see, there are some strange things showing up on this, on this cube. It is supposed to be white, but it does um, take on some sort of reflection coming from the background environment. I was going mad when I saw this and I didn't know how to handle this. And then I found the reason why this is so. And what you have to do, because of course you don't want this to happen. You have your reflections and, and speculars for getting this effect. 
what you have to do to make this van uh, vanish is you have to check override GI environment and just leave it like that it's black and when you hit render again you will see that the cube now is just pink this is because of the HDRI but it's not showing these strange kind of reflections anymore okay so let's get rid of the cube again because this would happen to the car too so I did this with a small dummy just to show you that this is crucial what is left to do there's left to do for example that the car might not be in the right position in the image because this is a perspective and you will want that your car and your plane are looking right positioned so when I make the car and plane visible again the cube is gone and I hit render you'll see that they're not in the right position way too high okay so now there are some things um, I did some guessing actually I didn't do this uh, mathematically correct I just did some guessing first of all when you take a look on the image without car you see that the camera height is nearly in the middle of the uh, door height yeah? you can see that the perspective lines are similar in the upper one and the lower one so the camera position is somewhere in this height so let's say it's one meter yeah? maybe a little bit more but then again my car is not that high so I don't want to look over the car so I, let's take the camera height as one meter this is what you can guess from the photograph and actually it is one meter so now the car and the plane being still too high we can do something with the object settings in the camera and we use the film offset Y and I did some trials before and I came along with minus 23 in this case and this looked rather correct as you can see when I render again so um, I think to my opinion this is uh, enough doing this by guessing it looks the correct size. You can slightly look over the car, you see some of the windows in the back, so this is quite okay. What I would like to do is turn the car and the plane because, as you can see, it doesn't follow the lines in the street. I have to uh, rotate this stuff. That was something with minus. This is too much, I think. Let's take minus 15 or something like that, I think. Render again. So this is uh, perhaps a little bit too much. Let's see. Now you can see these are not not really parallel. Let's take some minus twelve or something. So just one more test trend. Good. So we achieved quite a lot of things. We have the HDRI lighting our scene, that is our car and our plane, and we have the background image implemented. We tuned it so it looks quite correct in the colors, and we moved the camera, the film offset Y, to match the car's position with the image. This was film offset Y. Okay, so um, now we're proceeding on to the subject. How do we manage that the plane is not to be seen? And this is done by a compositing tag. What we want to see is the shadow, okay? But we don't want to see the plane, of course. But then again, we need the plane to have the shadow. So what V-Ray allows us to remove the side of the geometry, the plane, and still have the shadow. So how do we do this? We go to the plane, assign it a V-Ray Bridge compositing tag. And in the compositing tag, we first of all check matte surface. Okay, we have to check shadows too, because otherwise we won't see the shadow. You can try it by yourself. And in the comp properties, we want to see this plane. Actually, we don't see it because we have matte surface checked but we want to see the shadow on the plane, so we have to check visible to camera. You want 
uh, we don't want to have the plane cast shadows, we don't want the plane to cast uh, to generate GIs, we don't want to see the plane in reflections and in refractions. So be sure to uncheck these. Okay? It's not supposed to receive GI, it's not supposed to generate caustics, and it's not supposed to um, receive caustics. Okay? And now let's look if this really, really makes our plane vanish. Here we are. See the shadow on the street, but you don't see the plane anymore, right? So, this is basically it. Good!